Hello, friends. We thank God for another wonderful day. Shall we pray? Precious Father, we thank you. We bless your mighty name. Let your ancient words, which are so valid today, have effect in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we are going to meditate on a very important theme. And I pray that you avail yourself and let the word of God have a place in your heart. The theme for meditation is the results of being born again. So we are meditating on this theme. This actually captures the transformative experience and its sensual impact on a believer's life. The phrase born again refers to a spiritual rebirth, a fundamental concept in Christian theology. That signifies a profound change in one's relationship with God. In Greek, the term born again is translated as genethi anothen, genethi anothen, which means born from above or born anew. Thus, spiritual rebirth involves a radical change in the heart and soul of an individual, facilitated by the Holy Spirit. The Greek word for results is karpos, karpos, often translated as fruit, symbolizing the visible outcomes or manifestations of this inner transformation. Being born again results in a transformation of character where the fruits of the spirit, such as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control become evident in the believer's life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Thus, rebirth establishes a new and intimate relationship with God, characterized by a sense of sonship and adoption into God's family as described in Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 17. And this leads us to what we call the spiritual rebirth that makes one a new creature. Now, this concept deeply rooted in scripture, emphasizing that through spiritual rebirth, we become new creatures in Christ. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Here, Jesus emphasizes the necessity of a radical change in our approach to life and faith. To enter God's kingdom, we must embody the humility, trust, and innocence of a child. This transformation is the beginning of our spiritual rebirth. It is not a mere outward change, but a deep inner renewal that aligns our hearts with God's will. Jesus used the child to help his self-centered disciples to get the point. We are not to be childish, like the disciples arguing over petty issues, but rather childlike, with humble and sincere hearts. Are you being childlike or childish? The disciples had become so preoccupied with the organization of Jesus' earthly kingdom that they had lost sight of its divine purpose. John chapter 1 verse 13 tells us, Children born not of natural descent, nor of human division, or a husband's soul, but born of God. This verse highlights the divine origin of our spiritual rebirth. It is not something we can achieve through our own efforts or heritage. It is a gift from God. Being born of God means that our new life is rooted in his divine nature. This birth brings about a new identity one that is aligned with God's purposes and empowered by his spirit. And so in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. This statement underscores the essential nature of spiritual rebirth. To perceive and enter God's kingdom, we must undergo this transformation. Being born again is not optional. It is a fundamental requirement for a relationship with God. It signifies a complete renewal of our spiritual condition, enabling us to live in accordance 
with God's kingdom principles. So Romans chapter 12 verse 2 exhorts us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This transformation is a key aspect of spiritual rebirth. It involves a radical reorientation of our thoughts, values, and actions. By renewing our minds, we align ourselves with God's will and purpose. This ongoing process of renewal is essential for living out our new identity in Christ and resisting the pressures of the world. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 proclaims, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. This declaration affirms that through spiritual rebirth, we become entirely new beings. Our past is forgiven, and our old self is replaced with a new nature. This new creation is characterized by righteousness, holiness, and a deep connection with God. It is the tangible evidence of the transformative power of being born again. So 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 tells us, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. This verse highlights the eternal and unchanging nature of our new birth. It is not temporary or subject to decay. It is rooted in the everlasting word of God. This imperishable seed ensures that our new life is sustained and nourished by God's eternal truth. If you're able to do all this, then we will desire to work for Jesus Christ. And so John chapter 4 verse 24 states, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. This verse reveals the essential nature of our relationship with God. He is a spiritual being and our worship must align with his nature characterized by spirit and truth. True worship is not confined to rituals or locations, but a heartfelt, sincere devotion to God. When we understand God as spirit, it transforms our approach to worship and service. Our desire to work for Jesus becomes an expression of our worship. We are moved by the spirit to act in truth. Serving God not out of obligation, but out of genuine love and gratitude. This spiritual understanding fuels our passion and commitment to his work. Only with our spirits can we truly worship God. So 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 declares, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This verse ascribes glory to God, emphasizing his eternal and unchanging nature, recognizing God as the eternal king who inspires awe and reverence, prompting us to dedicate our lives to his service. And so when we acknowledge God's sovereignty and majesty, it compels us to serve him with all our hearts, understanding that he is the source of all goodness and the ultimate authority in our lives motivates us to work for his kingdom. This acknowledgement leads to a deep-seated desire to contribute to his mission on earth. Christian friends, let us consider the life of Mother Teresa. Her understanding of God's love and her deep spiritual connection with him drove her to serve the poorest of the poor. Despite facing immense challenges, her desire to work for Jesus never wavered. She saw her work as an act of worship, a way to honor God by caring for his children. And so the desire to work for Jesus stems from a deep understanding of who God is and our relationship with him. When we worship God in spirit and truth, our hearts are transformed and we are moved to serve him with sincerity and dedication. Recognizing God as the eternal king fills us with awe and reverence compelling us to commit our lives to his service. Let us continue to seek him. Let us continuously nurture our relationship with God through prayer, worship, and study of his word. And so as you grow spiritually, your desire to serve him will naturally increase. Identify calling 
Reflect on the unique gifts and talents God has given you. Consider how you can use these abilities to contribute to his kingdom. And whether it's through ministry, charity, or everyday acts of kindness, find ways to work for Jesus in your daily life. Shall we pray? Precious Father, we thank you for your word, that your word has a place in our life so that day in and day out, we'll continue to show people that we've been born again. Thank you for an answered prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Peace and friends, thank you so very much for making time to listen to the word of God. God bless you.